Recorded by Fiona J. McKenzie in Canna House, December 2015. From an original broadcast by Margaret Fayshaw, recorded on Friday the 16th and Saturday the 17th of December 1955. Folk Songs of South Uist by Margaret Fayshaw. South Uist is in the Outer Hebrides, one of the southernmost of a chain of islands known as the Long Island. It's 22 miles long and about 5 miles wide. Along the western or Atlantic coast is the Macher, a wide grassy plain which is excellent farmland. The eastern side is a long range of beautiful hills, deeply indented by three sea lochs. The whole island is studded with lochs, which are the feeding ground for a great variety of wild duck, geese and swans, and they're famed for trout and salmon. It has a temperate climate, but is windswept and stormy. The Hebrides are the last home of an oral literature in Great Britain, and South Uist today possesses it in greatest measure. Gaelic is the language of all the inhabitants, young and old. The children learn their English when they go to school. There are still men and women composing verse, and their standard and taste are high. I found in Glendale, where I stayed for several years, that the daily entertainment of the house was to hear men and women sing and recite poetry. They were familiar with the finest verse in their language and remembered it. The rules of metre in Gaelic verse are most complex and exacting. A crofter used the foot plough all day. And that right I heard him sing the entire poem of Ben Doran, some 500 lines. Where else could you find today the poetry of a nation being heard by children at their own fireside, where their elders sing and recite it because it's their joy? It's so much a part of them that it colours their speech, their manners and standards. When it dies, it will be because we from the South have destroyed it. Apart from the memories of St Columba and other Celtic saints, the oldest traditional memories in the Highlands and Islands are those associated with the deeds of Finn McCool and his heroes. Their lives have been prolonged by popular tradition until the time of invasion by the Norse. These ballads, known to both the Irish and Scots Gales, are recited in South Uis today. The greatest of all the US storytellers, or Shenachy, of this generation, was Duncan MacDonald of Penanurin, who died this past year. Fortunately, many of his tales have been recorded. The only Fingalian ballad I heard in Glendale was Duin the Kerstich, the ballad of the smithy, which I took down from John MacDonald. This ancient and popular ballad tells how the smith made a magic sword for Finn McCool, which had to be tempered in human blood in the blood of the first person Finn met after leaving the smithy. This happened to be the smith's own mother. These ballads used to be chanted, and Miss Amy Murray noted down the tune of the Ballad of the Smithy in Eriskay in 1905. It was sung to a chant which is similar to a prayer chant I've heard in Uist. It has also been used as the tune for an Oran Moor, a great song. Miss Murray's tune is printed in her book, Father Allen's Island. Father Allen MacDonald was parish priest, first in Dalibra, South Uist, and then in the island of Eresgay. He was a Gaelic scholar and poet and compiled a Gaelic vocabulary. <laughs> Nakodu <laughs> 
Hakam sava kash nangalam sava hara ganam truchi makhkaluna lai bakula tak for fel na finu sava shulani chauri ani gat sakhani sti ivan sanok stu khatami jesh vikad na pmuinu Another type of duen that I recorded is a religious ballad and is also chanted. It was once a custom to go from house to house on the eve of Hogmanay, reciting these ballads. One of them, Duen the Kashk, or the Lay of Easter, was given me by Shawnee Campbell. Mrs Piggy Curry is singing it. It speaks of St Bride, who in Gaelic tradition is said to have been the foster mother of Christ. This is a strange ballad which must have undergone corruption in being handed down, as some verses are difficult to understand. The verse that speaks of the cleric going round the stones that were fertile may have a pagan significance. Tonight is the night of the cruel crucifixion, of the hard cross whereon Christ was hung. Christ is the cleric over us, ordained by God of the elements, God of the moon, God of the sun, who ordained everything and supreme generosity. Noble the gift, noble the poor, noble the man of this night. Saint Bride went on her knee with the king of the elements in her lap. I am the cleric established, going round the stones that were fertile. I see hills, I see shore, I see men swimming. I see a slender, hard column coming ashore without friendship there. Many a servant, many a dog, many a great house is on the hill. Without a servant's weapon, without a weapon of falsehood, without a weapon of these meeting together. I am the messenger of the Son of God at the door. Let me in. Nog kun je graag de groe, ik heb kruur, dus de graag ook kreeg. Kreeg de kleer, gaat er geen gat, ik heb geen doel of aan. Kreeg de kleer, gaat er geen gat, ik heb geen doel of aan. Zoals de panak, zoals de boog, zoals de ver nou in je nog. Zoals de panak, zoals de boog, zoals de ver nou in je nog. Bedeert je hoe je de koen roeien en de doel van een hoog. Bedeert je hoe je de koen roeien en de doel van een hoog. Het is een beetje een kleerig stoog kan ik. Talt je mij al een glas dag kan ik? Smijt een glas, maar me weet je al talt je mij al een glas. Ga weer sleur, ga sleur, ga tolle, ga sleur, ga draai, ga sleur, ga naar vier en draai. Sleur, ga kalm op de koel, kruid. Je neemt zeker gaatje zand, je me kiezen, je me koe, je me temor en tolle. Oh, kom maar aan met die lieve heer, kom maar aan. Oh, niet gaat je dat met je. In modern Gaelic, the most literary form is the Oran Moor or great song. These poems were usually composed in eight line verses, describing great events such as a battle or eulogising an important person. They could also be satirical, for the Gael is remarkably adept at satire. They are sung to traditional airs and require a knowledge of the sub subtleties of the enunciation of this complex poetry and must be sung with style. The late 17th and 18th centuries were the age of the best known of the poets, and all of them are well known in Glendale. Down to the first quarter of the 18th century, the Clan Ranald family, chiefs of a powerful branch of the MacDonald clan and ancient proprietors of Uist, had, as their professional bards and clan historians, the MacVurich family, called now in English, Curry. They occupied a croft at Stulligary, rent-free, from generation to generation, in return for discharging this office. They wrote their history, eulogies and laments, in the black and red books of Clan Ranald, in the ancient formal language of the trained bards of Ireland and the Scottish Highlands. The last of them, Neil McVurich, also made songs in the vernacular Gaelic of his time, but though he was most careful in recording the history of the clan, he didn't trouble to write down his own poetry, so that only very little of his work is known. One of these is an elegy on the Clan Ranald who fell at the Battle of Sheriff Muir in 1715, for the Clan Ranalds and the US people with them 
were the staunchest Jacobites, and to this day will never hear of James II being referred to as a pretender. When Prince Charlie was in hiding there for weeks, before his escape to France, the US people never betrayed him, though there was a price on his head of £30,000. Other poets have composed Oren Moore, and still do. One that is sung today is the Maravran de Ger Ari Vudin. This was composed by Benbecula Bard, Angus Campbell, for Captain Angus MacDonald of Milton, a nephew of Flora MacDonald, when he was drowned in 1809 while ferrying kelp to a ship lying in Loch Einert. Young Angus of Arivulin, how sad and difficult it is to tell that you'll never be seen again. You who were of most kind disposition, who possessed also the spirit of nobility, are today in the grave. And what a loss! No more will you exert yourself to stretch your strong and powerful arm. Lad of joy and mirth who excelled hundreds in strength and heroism, it would have been better if we'd never seen you. You, who would stand loyal to your friends when others put them to hardship. Though you were gentle in your nature, it was your arm which could work vengeance. Everyone who comes from afar, sore, weary and fatigued, will cast a sorrowful eye on your dwelling to which they used to ascend, to the hospitable dwelling today decaying under the ruins. Often there was joy and pomp there, and therein the cold traveller threw off his weariness. Ach, nu is a krivig geschein, to people at his prachtach, e der hacken nach kruier, e jarg diedach and haster, schem krakt a harp kur in a laiet ludischen akal, gundjach tanem te faras na hostel chadig te lapem. Dier gleeg en kele, dan het ilig kan wassel, e gaku at jy, se schafe garagulat, Harolje het jy na her en glu na my his mong hoer stijf, en tres perse rein jarpe, na hui en kal en genuasje. Hoog te gruvles en doeljag, Gniene boonsken de gniene, Waar een jeug te waag, Goraagen het haar stries en jeen is, Goraagen oor het het komig, Geus roem maar een kiende, Goos het had is een tjeher, Mag dag moele hage, Many songs, of course, were made about the chiefs of Clan Ranald. Their lands included not only South Eust and Bimbecula, but also Egg and Canna, Arasig and Moidert. The next song is in praise of John of Moidert, who lived in the first three quarters of the 17th century. May young Ranald be seen in health, with his horsemen and his banner, with his helmet and shield in his hand, from which wine and beer are drunk. John of Moidert, princely hospitable, of slender steed and savage hounds, stirrups of silver on thy saddle, best of riders in Christendom, may God keep you, to be seen at the head of your men. We'll get plenty that won't be expensive for us. They'll retreat throughout the world. <laughs> Nor it roll or clever at the mark, reckoning your cruel shanker. Ye were a tree for hassen, tarshin monty strom, hanaika, fali los na ho, no ho, who the os na ho, you, fali los na ho, no ho, hocking phone, nor home lay home dust. 
Nooit het rullak levert ik, maar krijg nu niet kruur schenken. Je waar raad reef of gassen, daar zijn mantjes stroom gaan meisje. Another song about Clan Ranald has When young Ranald comes with his banner riding a slim, well shod horse, he'll find the road smooth beneath his feet across the moor and won't notice the stream. After the failure of the 45, the Clan Ranalds fell in evil days, and by 1830 they'd had to sell all their lands, including Uist. The new proprietors were strangers, absentees, who respected neither the language nor the customs of the people. It was during the 19th century that the land was cleared and made into big sheep farms, and people were forced to emigrate, or else to share their small crofts with other families. There was a living to be made at that time, burning seaweed for kelp, which was shipped south for the manufacture of soda. But when a cheaper way was found for this, the work was abandoned. An added misery came with the potato blight, as was happening in Ireland, and there was terrible poverty. More evictions followed. When I first came to Uist, it was less than a hundred years since the last of these, and it was well remembered for people were put aboard ships for Canada, and those who refused to go were hunted down like criminals and bound and carried aboard. Their houses were burned down and their possessions seized. Oppression grew so bad that in 1880 the Highland Land League was formed. Together with the Irish Land League, it agitated for the reform of land laws that allowed rack renting and gave the small tenants no security. As a result, the government, in 1883, appointed the Crofters Commission to hold meetings throughout the Highlands and Islands and investigate such grievances. This commission published its famous report in 1884. It recommended, amongst other things, security of tenure, the fixing of fair rents and a proper status for the Gaelic language in Highland schools. The report led to the passing of the Crofters Act in 1886 whereby many of these demands were granted. Before the Act was passed, men were appointed by the absentee proprietor to collect rents and taxes. These minor officials were notorious for taking advantage of the crofters and demanding far more than that was due. This fragment of a song I recorded satirises a ground officer who collected for Colonel Gordon, then proprietor of Uist. Fortunately for Gordon that he has you to lift the extra that's outside the rental. He only needs to send you home an order and he'll have it all right going to the banker. Oh, where's the show? Or in the booth? Oh, hello, he has not here. Oh, hello, he has not here. Oh, hello, he has not here. Oh, smish a hack a tear, a tear to home. First I know can go then a hoo we could talk a la hor at the we got and you like a horse and who could have his be a cast a call like a flag and bank. Oh hallo he has na here hua Hallo he has na here hua Oh hallo he has na here hua Smish a cutie or smidge to hua In spite of the poverty and so much emigration in the nineteenth century, Uist has kept her traditions of poetry and song. When a crofter was asked by the chairman of the Royal Commission if they were less cheerful and joyful than they once were, he replied that they were not so cheerful, as the struggle for existence was too hard for them. But when asked if they had kept singing and playing the pipes, he replied, yes, that they still sang and played the pipes. This song was composed at the time of the evictions. Will you go with me, pretty Mary? Will you go with me, pretty weary? Come away, hence, all together. We cannot stay under the factor, over countryside we'll be scattered, as spreads the smoke of gunpowder. When those fellows come towards us, the new officer and John Taylor, my head has grown grey, and I'm aged over sixty. Don't you think it's wretched for me this year to be evicted? Saint-Jean-Julien, 
Same kors tri fichet pliona, same hiava kane dihug, sercho pena hoch kariolu, go kam hule pliona koadi, jetulium marivin lurok, palabulium marivin lurok, hukin hukin yal shopulok, Kamutin for the Hakevali. Fair I can be Kroger's curry. Yova Hacha Hamis Mudin. Havin a fanjan is curtain. Hey, I could bakut nappy. Jetulium a heaving footer. Palavos yum a heaving footer. Hukin, hukin, yal, shopulo, kamutin, fudu, hakevali. In the faraway lands they went to, people who had left South Uist would sing the praise of their native island. Here is a song composed by an emigrant who has gone to Manitoba. It's sung to a traditional air, one to which an old Clan Ronald song was sung. O oh, my country, I think of thee, fragrant, fresh youest of the handsome youths, where nobles might be seen, where Clan Ranald had his heritage, land of bent grass, land of barley, land where everything is plentiful, where young men sing songs and drink ale. They come to us deceitful and cunning in order to entice us from our homes. They praise Manitoba to us, a cold country without coal or peat. I need not trouble to tell you. When one arrives there, one can see a short summer, a peaceful autumn, and a long winter of bad weather. If I had as much as two suits of clothes, a pair of shoes, and my fare in my pocket, I would sail for Uist. Here are some of my friends singing it at a Cayley in their home in South Uist. The next song copied on this tape is the song in praise of Uist. For my country, I think of thee. This is on page 78 of the book. It is sung by Mary McCrae. Da ist dich peinrocken, 
It was in 1929 that I came to South Uist from America to study Gaelic songs, and I made my home for five years with Peggy and Mary McCree in the township of North Glendale on the south side of Loch Boysdale. It was more remote at that time than it is now, because then there was no road, and the easiest access to it was by a small boat from Loch Boysdale, a mile away across the loch. Glendale is on the eastern side of the island, which is the mountainous side, and the land is poor and peaty, not like the fine pasture land on the west, the flat macher, which is excellent for oats and barley and potatoes and for cattle grazing. The people in Glendale, however, raised enough potatoes for their needs, and sufficient corn and hay for their cattle. Many of the men were away sailing on cargo and passenger ships, others fishing for lobsters and herring. The house of the McRae sisters was on the slope of a hill called Ishaval and faced the north. It had been built originally as a black house, which was the old type of house in the Hebrides. When the cattle were kept under the same roof as the folk, the byre being at one end and the living quarters at the other. The peat fire was in the middle of the floor, with a hole in the thatched roof as a chimney. But the McRae's had rebuilt it, as many others had done, putting the cattle in a separate byre and having a fire with proper chimneys at each end of the house. The kitchen at one end, and the bedroom at the other, and the little room in between. Many times I hear a thatched house called a black house in the islands, but the black house has no built-in chimney, but always the fire on the floor with a hole in the roof. They are very rare today. In 1932 I made a census of black houses between Eriski and South Uist, and there were then only 32 that were occupied. For what I came to find, I could hardly have been in a more perfect place. There couldn't have been greater kindness or help given to a stranger. The McRae sisters, middle-aged and years but young in spirit, had an inexhaustible store of songs, and the neighbours were also singers. All had a great fund of local lore, cures and recipes for dyes, riddles and proverbs and tales. Two of the neighbours were the brothers Eain and Shawnee Kimball, both well-known bards, and it would be hard to find in all the outer isles their equal in composing songs and in their amazing memories for Gaelic poetry. It was in their family to make songs, as they called it, as it is in Eain's sons today. Eain had recited his songs to famous Gaelic scholars like Dr George Henderson and Father Alan MacDonald 60 years ago. He had a wonderful style in singing. He was a stonemason and the church at Castle Bay Barra and his splendidly built houses are his monuments today. Shawnee was a crofter fisherman and there was never an event in the island that Shawnee didn't make a song about it. Fortunately, John McInnes took down his songs, which numbered about a hundred, and 45 of them were printed privately in 1936 in a little book, the cost being met largely by the sale of copies in Newest. The style of traditional singing varies from island to island. Many of the songs are known throughout the Hebrides, but in different versions. Most of this evening's songs were sung by the women of this small township, when there are still excellent folk singers with fine memories, unencumbered by a formal English education. The great majority of the tunes are either in the pentatonic or hexatonic scales, then follow Mixolydian, Dorian and Aeolian modes. Many of the labour songs are circular and have to tonic. The pitch of the women's voices is very low, especially the older women, who are the best of all the singers. Their breath control is amazing, especially in the push de biel, or mouth music, and their rhythm and articulation are an example to concert singers anywhere. Gaelic traditional folk songs are never sung with accompaniments. 
When others join in the chorus, it's always in unison, never in parts. The modern Gaelic choirs, which compete at festivals with part songs, are a recent innovation. To the folk singer, the words and tunes are inseparable. In Uist, the traditional singer must be given the words before she can even recognise the song. Love songs are famous in Gaelic poetry and are still composed. Nian Allen and Dean is one of the loveliest tunes that I heard in Uist. There are other versions of this song, but I think this is the best of all. Sad, O oh Lord, twere not tomorrow, the day my brother is to depart. I would have an excuse or two, my love, to lament you. Sad, O oh Lord, that we're not sleeping quietly tonight. I'd drink a bottle, though it cost me a crown. Young man who are listening to me, who are going to cross the bog, take care not to cut a leap so that you won't fall into the ditch. Sad, O oh Lord, that it will not be tomorrow that I'll take your white hand. I would drink your health. Beautiful maid of the castle, though I am without land, without milk cows on the moorland, I would keep you in bread, though I am a sailor. This lullaby has a verse which may well have been composed during the potato famine. The mother who has no milk speaks of her fear that the baby will take croup because of the rottenness of the paid potatoes. Ba ba mullen of bake. Ba ba melano pig, be o more catao pig. Ba ba melano pig, come o' in me catala. Catero in a medioot can vanity a hackam goat. Ecoloram can go on group, you put it of an data. Ba ba melano pig, be o more catao pig. Ba ba melano pig. Sailing songs are always popular. You've only to listen to the songs sung in the bar to know that. Many of the men are merchant seamen and bring back songs learnt from other islandmen or Nova Scotia that they've sailed with. Here's a song that says, Sweet to me is the sound of the fiddle, but sweeter still is the sound of the sheep chewing her cud. Spin your loom, knock your loom, feed your crap, the key to her loom. Spin your loom, knock your loom, feed your crap, the key to her loom. Spin your loom, knock your loom, feed your crap, the key to her loom. Crap, the key to crap, the key to crap, the key to her loom. The Sowen song is about the dish they made from the husks of oats. The black crock lay beneath the earthware kind that was made in the Isle of Lewis until recent times. Imba imba, old woman, put the black crock on the hearth. Don't make it thick and don't make it thin. Imba imba, old woman, only put a little butter in it. Ba ba, melano pig, be o more catao pig. Ba ba, melano pig, come o' in me catala. Catero in a medio. I give the next tune for the sake of the words. It's only a fragment that is obviously a part of the tune now known as Wood and Mary and Ah. But it's interesting, as it refers to the stealing of milk by a witch, who can induce it to come from the hook of the chain which hung in the chimney for the cooking pots. Milk as thick as buttermilk being taken from others behind their back, milking it from the hook of the pot chain, reciting the verse that Fionn knew. Or in Fionn, Banyo chu di shuvlai ka hor cho ha de gul ka bleo na tu ana slauri ka ta round the like fion Banyo chu di shuvlai ka hor cho ha de gul ka bleo na tu ana slauri ka ta round the like fion Push the bell or mouth music are tunes that are sung for dancing when there's no musical instrument like the pipes or the accordion some of these tunes became pipe tunes, just as most pipe tunes have had words put to them and become push to be all. 
One woman would sing these songs continuously for Strathbays and Reels. Here is another part sung by Piggy McCree, which has curious rhythms. <laughs> Of the labour songs, those for milking have the loveliest tunes. This one is from Loch Carn in South Uist. The white-footed heifer is my darling. No fetter will go on her feet. No fetter of heather rope or of cattle or horse, except a silken fetter from England. This is being sung by Miss Kate Macmillan Tolderham. The stone hand mill or quern is of two flat circular stones. The oats are fed gradually into a hole in the centre of the upper stone, which has a wooden pin as a handle, to rotate it on the one beneath. The quern is placed in a cloth spread on the ground to catch the meal. The quern's songs are irregular in time, because shoving the wooden pin to push the top stone around is not a movement that can be done in even time. Since querns are no longer in use, indeed were once prohibited, in order to force people to take their corn to the miller, these songs are very rare. Quern, 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 grind, grind, old woman, the quern. Someone is coming to ask for you. What clothes does he wear? He wears a saddle cloth. He's wearing rags. He's wearing the old skin of a quern. Grind it briskly, briskly, briskly. Someone is coming to ask for you. Show out and bra, 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 play, oh, bra, bra, play. Here's a fragment of a quern song that Agnes Curry sang. Bra, bra, play, bra, bra, play. South Uist being an island where handwoven tweed is being produced, it's one of the few places left where genuine walking or hand milling of the cloth is done. Walking is the process by which the texture of the cloth is made firm and even. It's done to the rhythm of songs, and these songs are of great interest to students of folk music, because nothing like them survives anywhere else in Western Europe, not even in Ireland or the Faroes. The only tunes I've heard which reminded me of Hebridean walking songs were records of Arabic music played at an international folk music congress. In both cases, verses of single lines were sung solo, followed by a chorus. Once upon a time, the walking of cloth was done by feet in the highlands, as it is still in Finland, according to Professor Otto Andersen. In US today, a table is set up. 
usually in a barn or outhouse, and a company of ten or twelve women sit at it, one at each end and the others opposite each other along the sides. The cloth is moistened and thumped around the table sunwise to the rhythm of these songs. It may take as many as ten songs to walk a piece of cloth, depending on the type and texture of the cloth and the length of the songs. The time needed to finish a walking is always calculated by the number of songs needed and not by the hands of the clock. As each song wears on, the tempo of the singing accelerates. When the walking is done, the cloth is rolled up tightly, while two women, facing each other, slap it vigorously with the palms of their hands to the rhythm of light, quick songs called clapping songs or or and bassy. The words of these are sometimes extemporised with joking allusions to the people present. The words of walking songs have some resemblance to ballads. There are varieties of metrical structure which are too complicated to describe briefly. The verses usually consist of half lines, whole lines or couplets, and the chorus may be divided into two parts or sung as a whole. In many of these songs, there are complete changes of subjects in the words. This is probably because the songs were originally extemporised and different portions added, the whole becoming fixed by repetition. When they're sung, the chorus is always repeated two or three times between the different passages. It's often difficult to transcribe walking songs accurately because they're sung with many grace notes and variants. The choruses are usually meaningless, mere syllables that carry the air, but they must always be sung correctly, for it's by them that the song is identified. The words often date from the early 17th century and they describe a vanished way of life, the pastoral life of the old highlands, before the coming of the big sheep farms when wealth was counted in cattle and a chieftain was esteemed according to the number of fighting men he maintained, the open-handedness of the hospitality he dispensed and his success in warfare and hunting. There are walking songs which describe clan battles, some are passionate love songs, and a few are made in the form of angry flightings between poetesses, for the authors of nearly all walking songs seem to have been women. The language of such songs is usually very pure, and some of the lines are highly poetical. One of the most interesting old walking songs I've heard is Maroon Ellen. The tune reminds me of Arabic or North African music. Hello, 
نیل مرادش کوه ها خلاهای دوها دوخت نبزه کنوه ها خلاهای دوها These walking songs are of a form unknown anywhere else in Europe, but all the songs have a distinctive quality that has been created in this little island, and listening to them at the long Cayleys, where everyone present takes their turn in singing, you are brought very close to the people who made them, their past history, their work, their loves, their joys and sorrows, all pour out in this silver stream of poetry and song. Hello, hello. 